So all the Christians are running around saying, we're in the new covenant, we're in the new covenant, even though we go through the list. Hey, what's going on, brother? So we may see things different, but Christians running around saying, we're in a new covenant and we're in a new covenant, and but the scripture that you see, does, you know, in the scripture you're reading and the way you see it, you don't see it. Well, maybe because you see it differently than others. But let me share some scripture with you. But one thing I would say is like, that could have been done a little more tactfully, you know, gracefully maybe saying all these Christians are running around saying, we're in a new covenant, we're in a new covenant. It's because we are. But let me share the scripture. It's, I believe we are. But it's actually, look, okay. At the Last Supper, right? The disciples did drink. Jesus did not. If you, if you know Galilean wedding custom, as soon as the bride takes a sip, they are betrothed. And in being betrothed, that is the same as being married. When you take the sip of the cup of joy at the gates of the city, you are married. When the bride takes a sip. And also the dowry and all that stuff, which plays into it. But let's, let's check out scripture. Are we in the new covenant? Yes. But remember, Jesus didn't drink, right? But the disciples did. The bride. Hebrews 9. Then verily, the first covenant, covenant is synonymous with testament. Then verily, the first covenant had also ordinances of divine service and a worldly sanctuary. Now we know the new sanctuary. For there was a tabernacle made. The first wherein was the candlestick, which is Jesus Christ, and the table, Jesus Christ, and the showbread, Jesus Christ, which is called the sanctuary. And after the second veil, the tabernacle, which is called the holiest of all which had the golden censer and the Ark of the Covenant overlaid round about it with gold, wherein was the golden pot and had manna, had Aaron's rod. Okay, so Aaron, we are now under the order of Melchizedek, no longer under Aaron. So there has been a change in priesthood. And we see first covenant, so that would mean there's a second. Not a renewed, a second. Uh, still Hebrews 9, but let's skip along. But Christ, being come in high priest of good things to come... By a greater and more perfect tabernacle, not made with hands, that is to say, not of this building. Neither by the blood of goats and calves, but by his own blood, he entered in once into the holy, of, into the holy place, having obtained eternal redemption for us. This already happened. For if the blood of bulls and goats and the ashes of an heifer sprinkling the unclean sanctifieth to the purifying of the flesh, how much more shall the blood of Christ, who through the eternal spirit offered himself without spot, unblemished, Pontius Pilate says, I find no fault in this man. He rode in on the donkey, was tested for four days. He came in the 4,000th year. Um, they, he was being tested for four days and found unblemished. He rode in on Nissan 10. They were to take the lamb on Nissan 10 and hold it for four days and at twilight sacrifice it. And that's when Jesus Christ was on the cross. Gave up, gave up his whole, gave up the ghost, they say. Um, Without spot to God, purge your conscience from dead works to serve the living God. And for this cause, he is the, medi capitalize that. He is the mediator of the New Testament. This is covenant. Now we can go to the original Greek and see the words that are being used and it's synonymous, testament and covenant. Um, that by means of death for the redemption of the transgressions that were under the first testament, they which are called might receive the promise of eternal inheritance. So there's a, tramp, there's a, there's a switch here. Real quick, before I forget, you did say something about teaching. You said, why are people still teaching? Which is very interesting. I've been speaking a lot on this lately about not being called teachers. Right here, but a spiritual teacher, like a rabbi, but be ye, but not be ye called rabbi, for one is your master, even Christ, and all ye are brethren, and call no man your father upon the earth, for one is your father, which is in heaven. Neither be ye called masters, these are like teachers, for one is your master, even Christ. Be, but be not called, but be not ye called rabbi. So don't be called a spiritual teacher. You know, that which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. We can teach and share, um, certain things, but when it comes to spiritual things, um, think about Nicodemus coming in the night, you know, Jesus says, you gotta be born again. That which is flesh is flesh. That was born of the spirit is spirit. He says, you know, I tell you of earthly things, 
and you don't believe me, how is it that I can tell you of heavenly things? But be, be not called rabbi. Okay, let's get back to Hebrews. So just to recap, we are discussing, you know, if we're in a new covenant or not. And remember, we'll get to the Last Supper. The disciples did drink of the cup. That there's the, the four cups of Passover are very important to understand. And it plays into um, Jesus asking um, the Father in the flesh to the Spirit, you know, to take this cup. And this actually plays into this. You got to understand the four cups and the cup of joy. All right. So look right here, right here. This is going to answer if we're in a new covenant or not. But also Jesus didn't drink. That which is flesh is flesh. That which is spirit is spirit. The physical kingdom, the kingdom of glory, the kingdom of heaven, um, the millennial reign kingdom, the physical one has been postponed, right? And the, the kingdom of God is from within. And the kingdom of God and kingdom of heaven are used interchangeably a couple times in the Bible and the Bible is written in this way, to confound the wise and boastful and prudent and is delivered unto babes. You have to have childlike faith. That's why Jesus said, suffer not the little children to come. And they came and said, "You, unless you be like one of these little children, you cannot see the kingdom of God. For where a testament is, there must also of necessity be the death of the testator. This is like a will. This is like, did this happen? Yes, it did happen on the cross when he said it is finished, Right. For a testament is of force after men are dead. Otherwise, it is no strength at all while the testator liveth. Jesus Christ rose from the dead. And he is our high priest in the order of Melchizedek. Hebrews is a great one to understand the covenant. And then the Last Supper. Um, whereupon neither the first testament was dedicated without blood, meaning this second testament was dedicated with blood. He's clearly telling us here we are in a new covenant. But also remember, Jesus didn't drink. But in Galilean custom, when you when the bride takes the sip, they are betrothed. And being betrothed is like being engaged is the exact same thing as being married. Right now, it's like, oh, it's your fiance. You're not married yet, so it's different. You can call it off. It wasn't like that back then. When she took that sip, they were betrothed. They were considered married. And then the married, the Galilean wedding was a seven-day feast where they had to wear special garments provided by the bridegroom's father. So everyone was on equal level and the doors were shut. No one goes in or out, which is also stated in, which happens at Passover, on um, the first Passover in Exodus 12, many things, but it's very interesting, right? How a Galilean wedding is seven days and they're already betrothed prior. There's a lot that goes into that, but anyways. For, whereupon neither was the first testament was dedicated without blood. Now, pause and read this, but this is speaking about the first covenant with Mo under, under Aaron, remember? Mo Aaron is Moses' brother, but now that's the Aaronic priesthood, but we are now under a high priest, under the order of Melchizedek, Jesus Christ. There's been a change in priesthood and a new covenant, saying, this is the blood of the testament which God hath enjoined unto you. Read that. Moreover, he sprinkled with blood both the tabernacle all the vessels of the ministry and almost all things are by the law purged with blood and without shedding of blood, there is no remission. It was therefore necessary that the patterns of things in the heavens should be purified with these, but the heavenly things themselves with better sacrifices than these, Jesus Christ. For Christ is not entered into the Holy of Holies made with hands, which are the figures of the true, but into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us, our mediator. Saying right here that he shouldn't go into the Holy of Holy every year, but just only once. For then must he have suffered, often suffered since the foundations of the world. We're in a new covenant. Just read Hebrews. Once. All right, the Last Supper. And he took the cup and gave thanks and gave it to them saying, drink ye all of it. For this is the blood of the New Testament covenant, which is shed for many for the remissions of sins. And remember everything we just read. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it anew with you in my Father's kingdom. And so that's how I'll answer it. I do believe we're in a new covenant. And um, it is very interesting. And we all have to pray on this for ourselves that Jesus did not drink of it. Even though we are betrothed, why did he say he will not drink of this fruit of the vine? It's a promise that it's going to happen. Blessed are they who, who are invited to the wedding feast of the Lamb.
There will be great rejoicing at the wedding feast of the Lamb. Sing praise and glory to the one that's called I.